the reality we live in. If it don't make dollars, it just makes no damn sense. Cash, guap, moolah, that's what it's all about. And as harsh as that reality is, it's one we must all face. You like stories like I do, ne? Well, gather round, gather round for the 11th episode of It's A Wrap. Namibian tea, oozing with scrumptious satire. May Day is the reason we had the public holiday on Monday, and it's a day on which we honor the workforce and their contribution to the world's economies. Money is king, and some workers took to the streets on May Day to express their frustration with their working conditions. Here's some of what transpired this May Day. They said, Odalata, Naiteke, let us break the wire. And in 1971, they organized without a trade union, only the workers, by themselves, a general strike that lasted for six weeks. And it shook the colonial regime. And it shook the employers, because workers sent the signal, enough is enough. Yeah. Then came independence, and we thought, finally, things will start changing. And to some extent, they did change. We got a new labor law that allows us to form unions freely, to organize, to mobilize, and to strike. But still, there were many things unresolved. We still had many workers unemployed. We have many like yourselves who have a job, but you are so poorly paid, you can't hardly make ends meet. Also, many workers were only given short contracts, three months, six months, so you have never job security, and you never know when will your job end. And that is not an accident. That is deliberate. The way our law is set up, you must join a trade union. A trade union has the power to compel your employer to bargain with you over all of the issues that have been discussed here. As I was listening to what was said, I asked myself, do you think your bosses have any idea of where you live, of how you live, of what time you have to get up to get to work, of how much you have to pay for transport? They don't think about these things. It's rough out here. And we asked Namibians to assess their working conditions. Check this out. This is International Workers' Day for people to fight for the rights and everything they need as workers. Now we have gathered here today to see whether we can find better solutions for the people employed in this country. Uh, we, we don't have tax money, we don't have housing allowance, we, have, we don't have medical aid, we are suffering. Basically saying no to capitalism, no to exploitation, uh, and viva the working class. As we stand now, we don't have any union because the company delaying the union, if we go to, to, to this union, they, they, they tend to the other union. All what we want is the workers to be united, to stand together, and then we go forward. We need to stand more together and uh, for the culture of resistance and for the future of the workers. The money that we used to get is not enough to pay our rent. We don't, it's not enough to, to feed our, our kids and the families. And the, the family, they are waiting for us to, to bring the bread on the table. Africans have been exploited for far too long, and we allow it to happen. So much so that our leaders take us for toffees. And you know what they say, if you present yourself as a toffee, you must expect to be licked. Our president, Hage Gengob, recently embarked on a trip to Zim to strengthen bilateral relations and subsequently announced that he sought advice from one Robert Mugabe on the land distribution issue. As if Mugabe's land reform policy did Zimbabwe any favors. Lord, please no. And the people said... 
it'll be beneficial for Namibia if it's done, you know, the right way. If they take the example from Zimbabwe and do the opposite of what Zimbabwe did, like the way Zimbabweans took the land from the white people, it was like in an aggressive way. They just pitched up at people's houses and just like, get out, this is our land. If it's done in a more civilized and, you know, uh, how can I say, uh, organized way, I think Namibian people can benefit and everyone will be happy. So, but for me, I'd say yes, it's a good thing, and also it must be done in a civilized way. Because I also how it happened in Zimbabwe, and now look where Zimbabwe is. It was once Africa's breadbasket. Now, look. It's, it's a really tricky question because the circumstances were different with this whole Zimbabwe situation, with the whole of Britain refusing to pay um, for the land reparations. Uh, so I don't know uh, what the Namibian government is going by. But if they're going to do it, it has to be a um, really peaceful thing. And when they give, do give people land, those people should be educated on how to cultivate and, and, um, and rear their animals, or else there'll be food shortages and uh, your GDP will suffer. His homie, Jack Huang, is yet to stand trial in a $3 billion Namibian dollar fraud case, and he's been awarded a tender to build 500 houses. And the Urban and Rural Development Minister sees nothing wrong with that. Some comments from social media. Nendongo Saki posted, from $3 billion tax fraud to 500 green light houses, including overnight paid bail application, who is Jack Huang? Natangwe Ipinge responded, the Gupta of Namibia. Dash Polis posted, Young Namibians, let's stand up and demonstrate against Jack Wang. We have a lot of local companies that contributed to our economic growth and independence to date. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And Africans have gotten deliriously drunk on that desire to make that guap. So much so that politicians quickly forget the promises they made that got them elected. The South African High Commission celebrated Freedom Day last week. We spoke to the High Commissioner, Mavivi Nyaka Yaka Manzini, who told us about her impressions of what's happening in her country. This year marks the year in which the leadership of the ANC will be renewed. So there is already a campaign unannounced going on of those people who are contesting for elections of the ruling party. But already opposition parties have started actually campaigning for 2019, which is for the national election, because they also want to take over. But it is the people who are going to ultimately decide what happens with their votes as to who will govern the country. The food ran out rather quickly. It's a wrap. <laughs> we asked some of the invited guests to share their opinion on the situation in the land of the Rand. Check this out. They should go back, look at the charter, and see what they have promised the South African nation, and do exactly that. Otherwise, in, 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 in 10 years' time, the ANC will be a forgotten party. And we still believe the ANC can still deliver. They must just think, stop thinking about politics of the stomach and the thing of the needs of the nation. It's sad to see the events that are unfolding in um, South Africa, especially in this year, which has been declared the year of um, paying tribute and remembering that stalwart Oliver Tambo. So I would hope, really, that the will of the people prevails. Still in the land of the Rand, racism also makes no damn sense. And one South African frequent flyer was unceremoniously removed from a flight after displaying such retarded behavior. Don't no, call me into use of it. I don't know what he said about it. Okay. Mm. I can't say anything about it. Okay. okay, guys, everyone here that was involved in this, in this unfortunate incident, I cannot help, I cannot deal with any aggravation or threat or aggression on this airport. Okay. They want to be aggressive or activated. There's only one aggressive person mm -hmm. who called this gentleman an <laughs> and then proceeded to say when we said to him that's unacceptable, to say to me, you people are all the same. And Sir, you are legally obligated to keep us safe. Yeah. I do not feel safe going into the air 
with this kind of aggression. He said you better watch yourself. Get out of the way. Thank you very much. We will get off the plane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. We will. I want his name, I want his name. That's and we want your names as well. Yeah. As long as everybody gets everybody's name, that's fine. Let me just please have to remove my wife's uh, suitcase from the Arab family. Yeah, well, okay. Right. And I'm going to go back there now, and then there's going to be a major, major complaint. Bring it. Bring it. The Namas took place at Wolfish Bay this weekend, and the Queen of Slay, apparently, Bonang Matemba, was here to zhush up the event just a little more. The patrons seem satisfied. Some comments from the web. Jenny Grace posted, Aye, Namas et Gaven Diyar. Well done, MTC and NBC, Tim and team. Mercy Karwombe wrote, I think an iPhone camera has much better image quality than the camera they're using. Fashion designer Hafeni Franz also watched the event. There was one highlight for the numbers, people that kept it to the, to the theme of the blue carpet. And the one was the drama or the controversy, not the controversy, but then the, 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 the highlight was uh, the dress that Bonham was wearing. It's from Roberto Schuchol's um, Venom collection, the graduating collection. And then, you know, a whole lot of Namibian, not quite a whole lot, but quite a few Namibian celebrities were, especially with the, the females. Uh, it traveled to the States, came back, and then finally, you know, Bonang waited a couple of years to wear it. Also, you know why? It's not because um, sometimes people think like, no, it's, but I, in my personal view, it's a classic. That's a classical dress. It will go down in the history. And then it all, it's one of those dresses that everybody wants to wear, but then you must have a social status to pull it off. It's not just now giving it to anybody, but then that's the controversy and I love and I'm looking forward to see what the news is by when I write about it. The famed green dress designed by Roberto Scoltz caused quite some controversy as it has featured a number of times. A day before the Namas, a team called me and asked me if I can come through with that. She didn't want anything else, she just wanted that one. And I thought it was only complimentary that she's in, 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 in the country, in my own country, and she wants, she wants that dress that she saw. So it's not a thing of me making the same dress or whatnot. People do not understand that. And now they're making it seem that they even posted different colors of the dress, which are not even mine. And, and those people didn't even attend the Namas the same time as Bonang attended it. So they're making it out. And that dress was only worn by big personalities. Nangula Nanyemba was the one that premiered it. Chuna took it to Hollywood. Ombili requested it. The Namas requested it last year because Bonang wanted it and they wanted to, to let the people know. That's why Pompili had it on. Some people took this whole fashion thing a little bit too far though. Just look. personality and comedian Mark Kariahua also attended the event and presented his performance which he called Make the Namas Great Again. It's a big production. Um, shout out to NBC for pulling that off. Um, it takes an army, I assume, and I saw this myself. Um, they were really up and down making sure it was a good show. Um, I like really, uh, um, it, it had good energy. It was very, very, um, it was very in sync with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the way the presenters were, the performers. And also the guests, you know, Namibians, they, they know how to behave, um, uh, you know, people, I, I, there was no um, anything really out there, no moments of someone trying to jump on stage, like what happens at other award shows, so really slick and cool, um, obviously other people, people did pick up a few things that they didn't, like errors, or like they say blunders, most, Namibians most, we like to see blunders, oh, and now the, 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 the microphone did not work. But you know, other than that, I don't think it's it's really that that bad, man. It's a, we need to give people credit where they, where, they, where it's due. Um, so yeah, shout out to everyone who did that show. And this week on Cecilia says. Gaza winning again. 
Every year is Gaza winning. Every year is Gaza winning. Can Gaza not give opportunity to the others also to win? Doesn't mean if he's having a lot of money and making more video music, he has to win every time. We also need this new youth, the new quietos, the new hip hop, pop, 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 pop. And poor AKA, they just had to mess with him. Check this out. Ooh, shit. Another thing that makes no damn sense is the increase in road fatalities. I'm done. All I can do is show you the carnage on our roads and hope that you make better choices. One of Namibia's best love artists, Elemoto, also received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Namas. He spoke to us about this achievement and his next show. A big event, lots of lights, lots of uh, performances, lots of performers. It was quite, was quite illuminated. But getting the Lifetime Achievers Award, that was a big deal, especially considering I'm only 39. Uh, for Namibia to grant me, you know, to, to basically say thank you and, and grant me and a word of gratitude, of, of you know, the, the nation's gratitude that I am I'm privileged and I'm honored, you know, humble to, 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 to receive this. New album is here, it's called Beautiful World, 12th of May at the FNCC. Please come, you can get to pick this up. On the 12th of May, get your tickets at the FNCC in advance. Uh, 100 bucks if you get them at the gate, at the gate it's 150. And uh, there will be Slekarki, Jeff AD, they'll be doing the opening hours. It's going to be a big event. Nambua Demoloa, who designed the graphic designer, designed this, is going to do a, an exhibition of 11 pieces on the night. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of surprises. I, I call it a night of music, love and light. Make sure you catch Elemoto show and a bunch of other exciting activities happening around the city. job is quite demanding. So this week in the shift, we walk a mile in my shoes. Okay, let's 
Let's go to Outdoor Links. You like stories like I do, eh? Well, gather round, gather round for the 11th episode of It's a Wrap. Despite appearances, my job is pretty demanding. Hey, hey! Well, that's that new link to the script, eh? Mm -hmm. Red Marcos. See, uh, thing is not here, Alzheimer's not here. So I've moved Talenis here. Alright. And then I'm going to do this. Everything that has a red star has a voice. So here by Talenis, just remember to move it forward. That's what it says to begin with. Let's see what's been on Dudley's mind this week. By all means, chase your dreams, get that guap. But don't lose sight of reality, because that just makes no damn sense. And with that, it's a wrap. Matoana, we pon and a honey, 